Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to be learning about some of the common media management commands inside of a Linux system. So some of the common media management commands are as follows, and we'll step through them. Number one, block ID, and that's useful to find out what type of file system a particular hard drive has. So of course the example would be block ID, BLK ID, followed by the device that you are questioning. So in our case, it would be forward slash dev forward slash SDA3. Number two would be mount, and that's accompanied by various switches to mount devices and hard drives or CD-ROMs, etc. In our case, uh, mount followed by the TAC T followed by NTFS, and we would have pulled that NTFS from the block ID command above. Uh, we would mount the hard drive dev SDA3 into a folder we've already created in mount forward slash windows. At the end here we could give it the option of TAC O to specify our own inputted options and we would input the RW for read and write permissions. Now after you mounted that hard drive you can simply navigate over CD over to forward slash mount or MNT and forward slash windows and then go ahead and modify change delete or add files. So after you've mounted a file system, once you're done with it, you have to unmount it. And that command is umount, not to be confused with unmount because that command doesn't exist. However, that would be logical to say it would be unmount. It is just umount. So in our case here, using our above examples, it would be umount forward slash mnt forward slash windows. You don't necessarily have to do it by the actual device ID. You can certainly do it by the directory that it's mounted in. So the fourth command we talk about here is fdisk, and that's used for disk management and partition management. Now you can create, edit, modify, and delete partitions in this as well. Uh, however, there are a lot of different tools uh, that are GUI based that makes this much easier, and it also adds functionality to be able to resize and move partitions and things of that nature, and that would be called gparted. It's gparted, and you can download that or install that as a package in most Linux distributions. Very common, popular tool to use, and I certainly suggest you use that over fdisk. However, if you're working in a terminal-only environment, I encourage you to research the manual pages for fdisk. So to issue the fdisk command on a target drive of dev sda, it would certainly be fdisk forward slash dev forward slash sda. And from there, you can modify partitions, change them, delete them, and stuff like that. So certainly once you have partitions made, you need to format them to have an actual file system on them. And that command would be mkfs, and that's to format a disk or a particular file system, uh, in our case NTFS or ext3, 4, FAT, FAT32, so on and so forth. However, uh, gparted also has this functionality built straight into it, so certainly definitely use gparted when you can. So the sixth and final command I'd like to talk about here is dd. Now this is useful for making device files or images and backing up files and disks. So uh, in these below three examples here, we would be using dd and if specifies input file. Remember that very important if is input file. Now keep in mind guys, these commands are very dangerous and you can certainly do a lot of damage with them. So tread lightly, make sure you practice and practice. Uh, with with disks and things that don't make a, a difference whether they get deleted or not. So in our first example here it would be dd and that specifies to copy and we would use if which it stands for input file equals forward slash dev forward slash sda now that would be our input file or our, our hard drive that we are working with and of is of course output file and that equals where you want to copy this data to so uh, we would copy it to forward slash dev forward slash sdb. Now, what this basically does here is create a direct one for one copy of dev sda and copies it directly over to dev sdb. Now, keep in mind it will copy all the partitions and all the data, including the free space. So, uh, make sure that your target hard drive that you're copying to is at least equal, if not more, space than you already had before. Otherwise, you'll certainly get errors and things won't work out correctly for you. Now, keep in mind the target or the output file here, in our case, dev sdb, will be overwritten with the contents from, contents from dev sda. So, very careful here. The second example is dev input file equals dev zero. And that's a file that has nothing but zeros in it. And it basically copies that to dev sda. 
and by doing so you overwrite all the data inside of dev SDA with nothing but null bytes or zeros. And that's useful for overwriting data if you're going to get rid of a hard drive or toss it out or sell it or something. Uh, keep in mind though it's not totally secure. There are other methods to be able to do this that are more secure. Uh, data could certainly in the right hand still be recovered using just this method, but it is a quick and fast way to overwrite data on a target drive. Now our third and final example is dd input file equals dev sda output file equals forward slash home forward slash backups forward slash full underscore image dot img. Now you can name the extension anything you want here. And what this command does is basically take a complete copy of dev sda and puts it into a image file that you can certainly use later to image it to another hard drive. Uh, by switching this command around. So if you did input file full underscore image dot img to the forward slash dev forward slash sda, you'd certainly be basically copying that hard drive back over again. So it's useful for backups to take full disk image backups. Now keep in mind your destination of course has to have more space than what you were copying before since this copies a one for one direct copy uh, it does not just copy what is the use space, it copies everything. So if you have a 300 gig hard drive and you only are using 20 gigs out of that hard drive, it is going to copy all 300 gigabytes. So keep that in mind. Okay guys, I want to do some examples here on some of those commands that we talked about for the media management commands. So simply I want to issue the fdisk command and I want to do that with the TAC L to see all the hard drives currently on this machine or plugged into this machine. I'm looking for my dev SDB which is a 30 gig hard drive here and that's actually one of my USB drives that I'm going to be using for this demo. And you can see here on dev SDB it has a dev SDB1 partition that is uh, specified as type HPFS, NTFS, XFAT, we're not too sure. So simply before we mount this, just in case we have any issues, we want to go ahead and use the block ID command to figure out exactly what file system is on the dev sdb1. So simply we will type in block ID and our target hard drive here. And you can see it gives us a little bit of information. So going over this information, it says dev sdb1 and it gives you the UID or UUID and it what we're looking for specifically says type and that's NTFS so we now know for sure that it's definitely an NTFS hard drive. So with that being said we want to go ahead and mount that to a directory so let me go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now I want to mount this to my forward slash MNT forward slash USB directory that I've actually created before and simply I want to do sudo mount I want to specify T for type and then that's going to be NTFS then I want to specify the hard drive I'm looking to actually mount. And then I want to specify the directory where I'm going to mount it. And I'll do tack O and I want it read write. Now you can see that the command actually completed. So if we went over to CD MNT and we went to that directory alone in LS, you can now see it seems like it has some green uh, background color over it, but there's a file in there called USB, a folder in there, CD over to USB, and that's where it's mounted at. Now if we ls here, we'll see the contents of the SDB1 partition. And in there, we just have a mounted.txt file for demonstration purposes. So I'll just go ahead and count, cat out that mounted.txt file, and it sure enough says mounted lessons. So that being said, I want to go ahead and unmount this hard drive. Now again, of course, uh, we certainly do not, do not want to use the unmount command because it does not exist. So that in mind, uh, when you are actually, if you are working in the current directory where this drive is mounted, you will not be able to unmount it. So you have to CD out of that directory. And now we can issue the sudo you mount and followed by the directory where it's mounted in. So in our case, it's dev, or I'm sorry, MNT USB. And we can go ahead and hit enter. And now if we ls again inside here, you can see that USB is no longer highlighted. If we CD'd into USB, 
you can certainly see that there's nothing there because there is no content. We just unmounted that uh, partition in question. So let me go ahead and clear out the screen here. Okay, so we're going to do one last example here with the DD command. And what we're going to do here is actually take our USB hard drive, which is dev SDB, and we're going to image that to an image file uh, used for backing up. And that'll give you an example of how to use the actual DD command step by step. So I'm going to go ahead and just CD over to home, Sean, and backups. Now, once I'm in here, I'll ls, make sure there's nothing in there that I'm going to overwrite. Of course, I'll go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now, I'll simply issue this command, sudo, and then dd, and remember, uh, input file is the place where we're copying from. So in our case, this is a hard drive here, so it's dev sdb and our output file or of is going to be where we're going to actually keep the file itself or where we're going to create that file uh, in our case we're going to be using this backups directory we're currently in so we don't have to specify an actual path to that directory and we're just going to name this backup.img now keep in mind there is a ton of switches that you can use with DD including a progress uh, switch that you can check the progress of um, what the current status of the copying is and things like that. Uh, you can specify block sizes here which may or may not make it go faster depending um, if you want to spot specify a block size like I'm going to do here, you can do it in increments of, you know, like uh, 512, 1024, 2048, uh, and that's really up to you. But 512 is the most stable option that you can use. Uh, so this may take a long time, depending again on, on how big your source is and where you're copying it to, or are you copying over the network, or are you copying it to a different hard drive. It, it Hardware speeds come into play, everything comes into play here just like everything else. So keep that in mind if you're going to do that. So simply here I'm going to specify BS for block size equals, and I'll just do 512, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now again, I didn't use any progress command, so this is going to take some time. And of course, since there's only a text file on there, it does not matter when using DD. It's going to copy the entire 30 gig USB hard drive. So it may take about 15 or 20 minutes, uh, depending on, you know, again, all those different factors of hardware speed and all those good things combined. So I'm going to end it here, and this will basically spit out a file in this directory we're currently in called backup.img. Now again, guys, I recommend getting a spare USB drive or something uh, that you can mess around with here and be able to make sure that you're not going to mess anything up that you, you need. So and if you're going to play with this stuff, please make sure you back up your system beforehand because you can do some serious damage and overwrite data, and that is not a good thing for anybody involved. So thanks for watching, and I will see you directly in the next lesson.